Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse and we have a double album bomb episode, kind of. It's Jack Harlow and it's Bad Bunny and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So in my predictions last week around album bombs, I screwed up in a way that I really should have caught. Thinking about Jack Harlow reclaiming the number one and bringing an album bomb of his own, I entirely forgot about Bad Bunny. Now, part of this is because he's a lot bigger in the States than Canada in terms of chart success. He literally only had one song debut on the Canadian Hot 100 this week, and partially because the album dropped from out of nowhere and it kind of went right past me. But it's also because I've always been more lukewarm to his material than outright embracing it. it hasn't never quite clicked for me, even though he's dropped multiple album bombs before, and I should have caught it. My mistake. But he's the one who ultimately helped me realize that the album bomb rules, they needed a revision in 2022 with the changing times. And even with all that revision, this is all going to go way too long, so strap in. And let's start off with the top 10 and the one prediction that was easy enough to call, First Class by Jack Harlow reclaiming the number one. Mostly thanks to consistent radio traction backing up the boost on streaming with the album bomb, but it's a narrower margin than you might think. Mostly because As It Was by Harry Styles reached the top spot on the radio and is still picking up speed at number two. Yeah, it might be overwhelmed in other channels for now, but it is stable. Now this was enough to unseat Wait For You by Future featuring Drake and Thames and push it to number three. It might still rule streaming, but radio has been slower to get on board and sales fell off considerably. But this is where we do reach album bomb territory because the next three songs are all from Bad Bunny, pretty much here on streaming alone. Moscow Mule at number four, Titi Mi Pregunto at number five, and Después de la Puea at number six. Apologize for the Spanish, it's gonna be a lot of this. We'll talk more about the songs later on, but they did push back Heat Waves by Glass Animals to number 7, where it's holding on to its radio and streaming margin, and that's just enough to cling above Big Energy by Lotto, Mariah Carey, and DJ Khaled at number 8, which might have more airplay, but it only just has that. Then we've got an interesting surprise. About Damn Time by Lizzo entered the top 10 at number 9, as great sales and improving performance in other channels seems to have set this up to be a hit. Right in the middle of a bunch of album bombs, aka The Worst Possible Time, and to prove it, Mi Porto Bonito by Bad Bunny and Chencho Corleone is holding up at number 10. It's the streaming. We'll have to see if Lizzo survives all of this. But now on to our losers and dropouts. And remember how I said last week I set it up so I didn't think I'd have to cover a ton of losses? Yeah, that didn't work. A full third of the chart wound up falling hard, and that's even before we get to the big name dropouts, like One Right Now by Post Malone in The Weeknd, Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo, Surface Pressure by Jessica Darrow, Broadway Girls by Lil Durk and Morgan Wallen, where it's looked like it's going to clinch the year-end list spot, Joy, along with likely light switch by Charlie Puth. And falling short, we got No Love by Summer Walker and SZA, Circles Around This Town by Marin Morris, Do We Have a Problem by Nicki Minaj and Lil Baby, and from Lil Durk especially, Aha and Rumors with Gucci Mane. Now on to our list of losers. A significant chunk of them, they really just are the future album bomb fading away. So Puffin' on Zooties hit 19, Love You Better hit 61, I'm On One with Drake hit 63, 7.12pm hit 64, I'm That N-Word hit 79, Massaging Me hit 87, and for good measure he also cannibalized Push and P with Gunna and Young Thug to 89, and Me or Some with Nardo Wick and Little Baby to 91. But again, over a full third of the chart lost traction, so let's start off with the other new arrivals that lost, like Honest by Justin Bieber and Don Tolliver tanking at 100, and Frozen by Little Baby at 96, and then our continued losers, 23 by Sam Hunt at 98, The Motto by Tiesto and Ava Max at 95, two songs from Lauren Spencer Smith with Fingers Crossed at 94 and Flowers at 93, the latter isn't a continued loser, I know, let's not get pedantic, and Beers on Me by Dirk Bentley, Braylon, and Hardy at 71. Then there's Don't Think Jesus by Morgan Wallet at 85, What Happened to Virgil by Lil Dirk and Gunna at 78, Freaky Deaky by Tyga and Doge Cat at 76, We Don't Talk About Bruno by the Encanto cast at 70, Right On and In a Minute by Lil Baby at 69 and 53 respectively, Never Say Never by Cole Swindell and Laney Wilson at 67, and Hours and Hours by Money Long at 
at 62. And to round out this group, Thousand Miles by Kid Leroy at 58, Need to Know by Doge Cat at 47, Easy On Me by Adele at 46, and ABCDEFU by Gale at 41. And now the rest. Peru by Fireboy DML and Ed Sheeran at 86. Never Wanted to Be That Girl by Carly Pierce and Ashton McBride at 80. If I Was a Cowboy by Miranda Lambert at 73. When You're Gone by Shawn Mendes at 72. To the Moon by Jan R. Choi and Sam Tompkins at 57. Mommy by Becky G and Carol G at 38. And from Lil Nas X, That's What I Want at 28. And Industry Baby with Jack Harlow at 42. And speaking of the latter, given that we had no returns this week, we only had one other gain outside of Lizzo. And that's Nail Tech by Jack Harlow at 65, the other prediction with him that I got absolutely right. Unfortunately, he really didn't get a proper album bomb this week, falling just short some covering all of it, but Bad Bunny sure as hell did breaking 22 songs on the Hot 100. And it was at this point I realized the album bomb rules, they've needed some tinkering. It's been years since I've introduced them. The charts are now at the point where album bombs don't just land in the lower half of the Hot 100. They take over the top 10 regularly. And since so many acts are just stream trolling these days with their albums, it makes sense to be reasonable, evolve with the times. So with that being said, here are the new rules. If an album bomb has five songs or less, I cover all of them. Yes, that means I cover all the Jack Harlow this week. It's still a lot, even as I reviewed the album. If an album bomb has between six and 11 songs, standard rules still apply. Only the songs in the top 40, or if they got best or worst. However, if an album bomb has 12 songs or more within a single week, only the songs in the top 20, or if they got best and worst, would be covered. This still means I'm covering at least seven Bad Bunny songs here, and I suspect a lot of Kendrick Lamar next week too. But with that in mind, here are the Bad Bunny songs that are below the top 20 and are neither the best nor the worst of the week. And apologies in advance for my abysmal Spanish. Agosto at 74. Asaname uh, Balar at 60. Mi Fool La uh, Vecicones at 59. Un Coco at 56. Un Verano Senti at 55. El Epigon at 54. Andrea with Buscabula at 51. Dos Mili 16 at 45. Aguacero at 44. Afecto at 34. La Corriente with Torni Dice at 32. Neverita at 31. Ojitos Lindos with Bomba Est at 26, and Yo No Soy Celoso at 22. Got all that? Good, because my list of new arrivals is still absurdly stacked, starting off with number 99, Poison by Jack Harlow featuring Lil Wayne. It's crazy how you on my mind. It's kind of crazy how you on my mind. I mean, it's not the worst song on the album, but it's honestly pretty close. The fizzy percussion off the vocal sample and then the odd oily phrases on the third verse with little in the way of a low end until Lil Wayne slips in to the sort of verse that reminds me way too much of the era where he'll just say anything with a free poop reference to boot, claiming that he eats so much shrimp that he got iodine poisoning, claims that he is vaxxed from the hose, and then says, I might have to jack your bitch because I'd be on my Harlow shit. Maybe it's just me, but it's not exactly a good sign when the MC placed next to you to boost your profile uses your own name as a punchline. But when Jack Harlow's most notable lines are about wanting to get photos in Getty images and then bring back MTV Cribs, alongside a pretty weak hook where these girls are poison, but they're the good kind, maybe it's for the best you got overshadowed. It's not good. Next. Number 97, Young Harleazy by Jack Harlow. I was in the seventh grade selling hard CDs. I was on stage telling show hard beating. Now I make it sound like I write the bars easy. But this feels like a track that was stitched together from a bunch of fragments. More brittle percussion, slight piano phrases, another weak hook that comes after an interlude from Snoop Dogg that's faintly embarrassing. And that seemingly leaning on all the ways that Jack Harlow is settling into his lane, which includes finding all the non-freaky girls and wondering out there who is as passionate as him which seems to be the opposite of his vibe. Now, to Jack Harlow's credit, I actually mostly like the third verse here. The flex is a little bit more up-tempo coming off the slight horn embellishments. The braggadocious side and charisma finally locks in. And there's a couple decent punchlines, but really it's not quite as cool as it thinks it is. That's a problem. Number 88, I Do Anything to Make You Smile by Jack Harlow. I come back home and now my style switch. They say I get spicy when I step out this ain't mild shit. I hit that last night and she already feel nostalgic. 
Wow, between all the watery effects, the whistles, and the rubbery bass, this sounds imported from the mid-2000s, and I'm not sure that's a compliment, especially after that lush strings intro that they can't do anything with. Now again, I do like Jack Harlow's bounce in the song. The flow is decent, he's got some attitude, the hook is a little bit sharper. But then the second verse happens, and he's gonna fuck the earrings off this girl, or referencing Ed Sheeran's Shape of You, which I might like as a song, but not for it being all that sexy. Thank God there's the Coach K and Rick Patino reference to end off his verse that's actually kind of clever because otherwise this would be a dud. Next, number 84, Whiskey on You by Nate Smith. I think the story of Nate Smith might be more interesting than the music that he's making. He went to Nashville in the early 2010s, got some opening gigs and a record deal, but never really saw a lot of traction. So he moved back to California, his house got caught up in the fires in 2018, and he wrote a song that got a bit of media attention in the aftermath. And that convinced him to go back to Nashville, where a couple years later he got some viral traction on TikTok and another record deal with a bigger label. And it's kind of a shame the song doesn't give me that much to work with. Yeah, I can appreciate a more organic organic approach with the guitar layering and the live drums, but the vocal mixing just feels a little bit muddy and some of the multi-tracking a little more synthetic than it should. The composition otherwise is pretty basic, and the whole sentiment of I'm done drinking to get over you, no no, all these drinks are a celebration, it's not all that convincing that he's actually moved on. Again, I feel like I get songs like this every other week in country, and they rarely make that much of an impression. It's not bad, but it's also not interesting. Just saying. Number 82, Hold My Hand by Lady Gaga. I won't leave till I understand. Promise me just hold my hand. Yes, I'm more irritated than I should be that we're getting a sequel to Top Gun. The original film was fine for exactly what it was, and I put money on this sequel stripping out any of the camp and subtext that kept that film in the public consciousness decades later. But hey, Lady Gaga made the theme song in the style of huge 80s power ballads. Nice job getting away from the subtext, boys. And, okay, look, Lady Gaga is the sort of performer who can crank this up to 11. She's got the pipes for it. And when the guitars spark in for the hook and try to erupt for a solo on the bridge, I was close to getting on board. The problem is that Lady Gaga still insists on working with Blood Pop, a producer that I have never liked, and here gives the song some of the most leaden and stiff percussion I have heard in months, especially on the verses and the pre-chorus, so the song can't really build any momentum off its sentiments of comfort and brotherhood, especially for a Top Gun movie, and it feels stodgy. This is not a danger zone. In other words, I guess it works fine as a stock modern movie theme, and Lady Gaga's really trying hard to make it work, but I've heard this formula one too many times. Okay, at best. Number 50, This Love, Taylor's Version by Taylor Swift. Full disclosure, I did not remember this love. It was an album cut from 1989, not one I really revisited in the eight years since. Though I did mention it a couple times in the review for having a generally pleasant Enya-esque sound with its vocal arrangement, with a surprisingly wiry tone against some pretty underwhelming and basic lyrics. And... Well, it's as much as I appreciate Taylor Swift's voice picking up more character with age, and the acoustics and percussion feeling a little warmer as a whole against that pulsating groove, this still feels like an album cut for me, without the detail and flair that makes Taylor Swift's best songs. Don't get me wrong, the production is better than what I was expecting for Taylor's version of 1989, given some of the missteps that you had with Red, but it doesn't exactly make a weak or uninteresting composition any better. Just okay for me. I'd skip it. Number 49, Otro Atardecer by Bad Bunny and the Marias. I think this is my favorite song off the Bad Bunny album. 
and I'm a little bit surprised that it is. The wheedling guitar fragments off the fluttery percussion and with Bad Bunny as flagrantly horny as ever, but the Marias provide some enough soft, cooing presence to balance out how he underplays more of the song, even before they switch into English for the bridge. And when you dig into the content, I think that's partially why the song works. It's reminiscing, thinking back on an old hookup in the lingering ashes of a would-be romance, where they both wonder if they could actually reconnect someday, especially as there's so much that remains unknown that they want to know. It's a really sweet, understated sentiment that the both of them pull off really well against the tropical backdrop, so yeah, great little album cut, absolutely worth hearing. Number 23, Churchill Downs by Jack Harlow featuring Drake. Cause I'm done being extra with the extroverts. The label used to wonder how I'm supposed to stand next to Vert. Probably never thought that I would get these legs to work. This song got a lot of attention as an album cut, mostly because Jack Harlow has modeled a lot of his sound off of Drake, and then the man himself has to reassert his presence to ensure folks knew who was the genuine article. And if I was Jack Harlow, I probably would have fought to not have this song on the album. Yeah, it's a big feature, but he should showed you up in big time, but let's also take a step back let's realize this is still not that good regardless of the verses. The dreary sample and the spare tapping percussion, Jack Harlow rambling about his come up and his newfound success, whereas for as much as he implies that folks don't know him more, there's less detail to inform what we don't know beyond a few passing references to meeting Drake and where he came up. And Drake's verse... Well, okay, outside of that dumbass line of how he can't address folks who don't own property, all amidst a lot of bitter lines about getting on the cusp of really cutting loose and punching back at Pusha T, although you know he never will, Drake, let's not act like the majority of your moves aren't promotional, or that a significant chunk of your own catalog is not disposable. And then you follow it with the line, I blow her head up, it's an inflatable. I mean, Drake being petty with his subs has long ago stopped being interesting for me, especially as he sounds miserable every time he does it. And as much as I can appreciate Drake with better flows and punchlines here, this doesn't rise above middling for me, regardless of who wins. Number 21, Dua Lipa by Jack Harlow. Shake the web, they are here chewing me up. Fuck it. Fade away, I left that Luca Neal. Bucket. I heard from someone you said you could be us. Nothing. Okay, let's get this out of the way now. Yes, Jack Harlow got Dua Lipa's permission to use her name as this song. Although, read a little bit deeper into what Jack Harlow has said around this, and you realize she was probably kind of skeeved out by it, which you think would be enough to get Jack Harlow to reconsider, but he didn't. Hell, he even doubled down, referencing both wanting another Ariana Grande afterwards and then highlighting his connection to Kanye West. And if you're name chasing at this point on your album, you might have a substance problem. And that's kind of a shame because the melody's got this oily gloss and otherwise it's fine. The flow's pretty tight, it's horny but not getting disgusting about it. And I think Jack Harlow is probably thanking God that Luka Doncic line is going to have some play going to the Western Conference Finals for Dallas. I'm not saying it's good by any means. A lot of folks are calling this a simp anthem and it kind of is, even though I'm kind of sick of anyone using the word simp in 2022. But it's not bad either. Just kind of there. Number 18, Tarot by Bad Bunny and Jay Cortez. Okay, after Takiti was a huge hit, I knew this collab was going to get a lot of attention, and for the most part, I get why. The warping synth fragment alongside the faster rollick of the percussion that might not have the same atmosphere as both these guys salivate over some insanely hot woman. The vocal filters dropped on the vocals and the verses do not help, nor does the flagrant objectification in describing this woman as a museum piece or a piece of art. But overall, the groove is more defined. I get the appeal of this. I guess it's fine enough. Number 16, Un Ratito by Bad Bunny. You know, up until the stock reggaeton beat dropped in, I actually kind of dug this. The watery melodies surrounding Bad Bunny sounding more dejected as he wonders how he will ever be able to settle down properly given how hectic his life is right now, especially as he comes across being a little bit more thoughtful and mature. I mean, it's still melodramatic as all hell. The whole nobody will ever love me thing, it, it gets a little bit ridiculous. But Bad Bunny is one of the few in the modern day who can pull it off pretty well. And while I wish the percussion was more interesting, this is still good. 
I'll take it. Number 15, The Heart Part 5 by Kendrick Lamar. For designer, belt buckles and cloud overzealous and prone to violence. Make their own turn. Be your will of the will alignment. Residue burn. Miss that in the city. Miscommunication to keep homo detector busy. So I will have a lot more to say about Kendrick Lamar next week. Or likely tomorrow or the day after if you see the review of the album proper going live on my main channel. But The Heart Part 5 is not on that album and really served as the primer for everything to come. So let's dig in. Into it. I'm not going to speak much on the deep fake elements of the video where Kendrick is overlaying the faces of famous black men of his own, some very notorious for their transgressions, mostly because the point he's trying to make is a challenge to the audience as to where and when forgiveness should be extended, especially in the context of how black men are trapped within a culture that will chew them up, be it within gangs and the prison industrial complex, or hell, just the mechanisms of capitalism as a whole. And when hurt people wind up hurting more people, the cycle just continues anew, especially as they may succumb to their vices. Where on the third verse, he will speak from Nipsey Hussle's perspective, and he will forgive his killer, knowing the pain that underscores that action, and how Nipsey Hussle's legacy will continue on. I mean, I still think I prefer the concept when Run the Jewels did it on Thursday in the Danger Room on Run the Jewels 3. It's not quite that unique, but different conversation. What's more important is that these are some loaded ideas, and full disclosure, I don't quite think think Kendrick pays them off all the best on the album for a lot of complicated reasons, but what this song puts forward is still pretty damn potent all the same. There's some big ideas here, and the execution is great. Kendrick's flow is on pointing as the gorgeous sample of Marvin Gaye with the patterned textured percussion around him, and even when he drops out the drums for the third verse, it's still really effective. Hell, I'd argue it's better than a significant chunk of the album that it precedes. So yeah, great thought-provoking song, and even if I know it's not really gonna stick around because these precursor tracks never do impressive all the same i'll take it number 14 party by bad bunny and rao alejandro The next very obvious collab, given that Raul Alejandro has been building a lot of momentum for the past little while, and it's not one of the better ones, to be honest. A big part of this is the once again stock percussion with very limited melody to support the mix, as both men go off on their horny club hopping that of course gets pretty flagrant, but if all you're gonna do for the hook is just repeat the word party over and over again, it feels kind of undercooked, guaranteed to get attention because of the names and nothing more. I don't know, it's fine, but it should have been better. Number 12, Thought You Should Know by Morgan Wallen. You know, I'd like to say that the reason Morgan Wallen continues to get these big charting hits is because Nashville's giving him the major push, but no, this actually got here on sales. His audience has decided to get back on board full force, and I'm still kinda conflicted about all that. Even if in this case it's clearly being pushed as a Mother's Day song as an extended letter to his mom, full of pedal steel and sandy percussion that actually sounds really warm and organic. Now the truth is that this song's actually been available since he dropped it in May in 2021 on his Instagram and YouTube, only now it's getting a singles push, and okay, look, it's kind of a sweet song without being sappy. I'm a little bit surprised he just openly drops profanity, given this is Music Row, but it feels more lived in and conversational, more heartfelt. We're discovering that Miranda Lambert co-wrote it's no surprise at all. I'm not sure it's got another element that puts it into my higher tier of these sorts of I love my mom songs, but it's hard to hate stuff like this. It's good. Not really worth remarking on that much further, though. Let's move on. Number 10, Mi Porto Bonito by Bad Bunny and Chencho Coleon. I'm a little conflicted with this. On the one hand, the rickety, weird mix short on melody but with the same stock reggaeton percussion doesn't really impress me, and Chencho Corleone is as nasal and grating as ever, especially as he's not exactly bringing much in the content to elevate this beyond his horn dog wildness. On the other hand, the beat switch up for the start of his verse is not bad, and I don't think Bad Bunny is necessarily bad here either, so it just kind of washes out and winds up kind of forgettable. 
at least for me. Number six, Despuces de la Puea by Bad Bunny. I saw some folks highlight how they liked how this was a pivot with a wild shift towards meringue during the second half of the song with a lot of shrill blaring horns and the textured percussion. And I'm sorry, I didn't care for this at all. For starters, the song begins with this goopy off-key warbling with no percussion as Bad Bunny tries to set up the sexual encounter. And then there's this immediate swerve into the chintzy meringue session where the mix sounds underproduced and Bad Bunny plays into helping this girl cheat, saying that her ass is spoken of in the barber shop and the grocery store. And then one of the later interludes, it implies that he screwed someone's wife and God's forgiven him but the husband hasn't. You all know how this kind of makes it difficult to buy into him as a sensitive romantic figure, right? Even if this all is being played for laughs and melodrama. I mean, my larger issue comes to the construction. This clearly was two ideas that were poorly stitched together and neither of them are all that likable. I don't think this is good. Let's move on. Number five, Titi Me Pregunto by Bad Bunny. <laughs> This is a track where I get the appeal, but I feel like it misses the payoff the way it should. The weak, off-key guitar dropping into the shuffling Latin trap groove that eventually picks up an air horn seems to be building towards a drop, but the entire song feels lacking in tune to drive towards an effective climax. And then it switches up the sample into this eerie synth intending to drive some actual menace, and it just never gets there. Then there's the content, where Bad Bunny rattles through the list of names of women that he's seeing around the world without settling down he's being that capricious player only for the switch up to reveal this might actually be a problem for him he actually starts warning women to stay away actively and okay not a bad sentiment sure but the album doesn't really pay off what's set up on this song and the execution just feels kind of goofy alongside the concept i mean it's not a bad idea just didn't quite work all the way. And finally, number four, Moscow Mule by Bad Bunny. And this is the big one. The album closer with a title referencing alcohol and a cocktail and some odd clanking effects against the atmosphere in the pulsating low end, where to the whooshing effects seem to be setting up a different scene. And then the stock reggaeton groove stops in, albeit with a more texture building across the hook. Albeit there's a cool spacious breakdown for the bridge where the implied hookup seems to be coming together, but it feels like they went a little bit too far overboard with all the reverb. And while I appreciate Bad Bunny being a little bit more coy about the possibility of hooking up with this person where it's been back and forth for a while there's more of a tease but midway through the first verse you know exactly where this is going i don't know there's some interesting stylistic elements but i'm not sure there's enough of them to help this really stand out much especially longer term and that ends our week where the best of the worst actually fall out really fast. In the latter category, Poison by Jack Harlow featuring Lil Wayne, with dishonorable mention going to Despues de la Playa by Bad Bunny, as again, despite the novelty, I don't think it works. Now for the best, you know what, I did want to give it to Bad Bunny and the Marias for Otro Atardecer, but it's getting the honorable mention with the best going to The Heart Part 5 by Kendrick Lamar, which is just excellent across the board. I mean, it's kind of tough to keep up with that. What will be interesting next week to see what happens alongside Kendrick's likely album bomb, so stay tuned to find out for that. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.